Hi, I'm Leon, the founder of Audio Advice. This video is on an updated version of a very highly regarded turntable from Cambridge Audio, the Alva TT V2. Cambridge Audio introduced the original Alva TT at the CES show in 2019, and it garnered a Best of Audio award on the spot. The name for the Alva comes from Thomas Alva Edison, the inventor of the first phonograph. Since its release, it's been highly praised by reviewers all around the world. This was a pretty cool feat for a company not known for turntables, but if you know how the engineers at Cambridge Audio pride themselves on great sound, it's not really a surprise that they come up with a, such a high performance and innovative turntable. Cambridge Audio has been London based since 1968 and was the first company to incorporate a toroidal transformer into an amplifier. Since then, they've continued to produce award-winning electronics and are focused on providing outstanding value. They go so far as to even listening to individual components when designing their electronic circuits to find the one that sounds the best. And to keep everyone's ears tuned to what live music actually sounds like, the London office has weekly concerts on Friday afternoons focusing on a variety of different types of music. The original Alva TT had a built-in phono preamp and a pretty unique feature at its time for a turntable with the inclusion of ADAPT-X HD Bluetooth. Cambridge loves to listen to their users and the improvements we see on the new Alva TT V2 are all based on feedback they received from the original Alva TT owners. In this overview, I'll go over the Alva TT V2 in general and talk about some of the upgrades and why they came about. The Alva TT V2 looks very similar to the original Alva TT, which in a nutshell is sleek and simple. The appearance reminds me of the look of the CX series components which have a rounded floating appearance. The footprint that sits on your shelf is smaller than the plinth, which gives it that floating look just like the CX. The bottom part of the plinth is a dark matte gray finish with a solid aluminum top plate. Three small silver buttons are on the left side for power and speed control, and an elegantly embossed Cambridge logo is on the right. The Alva TT V2 is a manual turntable, which means you need to move the arm over to the record, lower it using the lever, then when the record ends, you need to lift it up. The tone arm has tracking force and anti-skate adjustments. However, there is no way to adjust the tone arm height. Cambridge Audio intentionally designed the Alva TT V2 to have an appearance that gave you confidence it was going to be easy to set up and put right to use. I love the minimalistic appearance with its rounded corners and clean lines. Build quality is very good as I see with all of their gear. This is one stout turntable. The plinth without the platter weighs almost 16 pounds and when you add the 5 pound platter you're just shy of 21 pounds total. Cambridge Audio includes a nice set of audio interconnect tables and a ground wire with the turntable, which I felt you don't really need to upgrade the interconnect compared to some other products that come with those throwaway cables. These were actually really nice. And what has become their trademark way of doing the back panel, the labels are printed both right side up and upside down to make them easy to read when you're leaning over the top. The Alva TT sits on four feet that have some damping characteristics and feel slightly squishy to the touch. As I said earlier, the plinth is quite beefy with its solid aluminum top plate and anti-resonant base. The platter is made from polyoxymethylene, POM, a high-tech engineering thermoplastic using precision parts that require high stiffness and excellent dimensional stability. There is a metal insert in the center with a slight indentation for your record label. Like many turntables with high-tech plastic based platter, it's designed to be used without a mat. For those of you who like to roll your own sound by changing mats, you need to bear in mind the arm is not height adjustable, so it's best to stick with no mat. In a departure from most performance turntables, the Alva TT V2 uses a direct drive motor system. However, Cambridge Audio goes about direct drive quite differently. Most direct drive turntables have a very high torque motor and a fairly low mass platter, so it'll get up to speed instantly, which has made them a favorite for DJs. Cambridge goes in the opposite direction with a medium torque motor and a very high mass, almost five pound platter. It gets up to speed just a shade quicker than most belt drives, but Cambridge Audio claims this system produced as good or better speed consistency than any belt drive system they tried for the same price point. Direct drive makes setup a bit simpler as you just drop the platter on and you never have to worry about replacing a belt. The tone arm for the new Alva TT V2 is where one of the biggest changes occurred. The original model used a Riga arm made for them which had a non-detachable head shell. 
Cambridge apparently got a lot of user requests for a detachable head shell to make it easier to switch cartridges. This does make some sense as the Alva TT and the Alva TT V2 come with a very high-end, high-output Alva MC moving coil cartridge. A lot of their users wanted to be able to throw on a less expensive cartridge for records that might not be in the best shape. At first take, I was not sure about this move as a Riga arm in my mind was a super nice arm. But in my listening test, this new arm performed very well. I do wish they provided a way to change the tone arm height since they made it easy to swap out cartridges and you may need to do that with a different height cartridge. The Alva MC is a high output moving coil cartridge with an elliptical stylus and aluminum cantilever. I love the sound of moving coil cartridges as by design they tend to extract more musical details from the vinyl. The built-in phono preamp is based upon the very highly regarded Cambridge Audio Duo separate phono preamp. It's set up to be the perfect mate for the Alva MC and any other moving magnet cartridge you might want to use with a second head shell. This was really smart on their part by designing the high output Alva MC to use the same gain and loading settings as the majority of moving magnet cartridges out there. Cambridge coined the phrase, just add vinyl for the original Alva TT with the concept you could easily get music into any type of system with the Alva TT. This is why they also include Bluetooth, but not just any Bluetooth. It's AdaptX HD, which means you'll be streaming Bluetooth at high res 24 bit 48 kilohertz. Standard Bluetooth is pretty lossy, but the AdaptX HD is not and gets you fairly close to the sound of a physical connection. For someone with a great pair of Bluetooth headphones or speakers, all you need to do is add the Alva TT V2 and some vinyl. When the original Alva TT was introduced, it not only was simple to use, it shocked me users to how good it sounded just as a basic turntable. It turned out to be a fantastic turntable even when you used it without its Bluetooth feature. The Alva TT V2 gets two new features that let you take it even further. You can now defeat the built-in phono preamp should you wish to connect it up to a system that might have a better one or use a separate one and you can completely turn off the Bluetooth transmitter for a slight improvement in performance by shutting down that circuitry completely. Setup of the Alva TT V2 is pretty simple. I did have one bone to pick on the supplied cables. They had tiny little black and red rubber bands to indicate the channels, and these fell off on the ones I tried. But fortunately, the cable itself has writing on one side, so I was able to use that to keep the left and right channels straight. The table is supplied with a nice Ortofun stylus pressure gauge, and you can use this to set the tracking force. But I found even though the counterweight had no numbers on it, the large lines indicated 0.5 grams, so four large lines after I zeroed it out got me to two grams, which I confirmed with the gauge. Since the table is so heavy, I recommend you connect the cables and power up first, then spin it into position for the rest of the setup. We go over how to set up from start to finish in a separate video. If you have followed some of my testing, you all like to put units into systems better than they should be to see how they perform. In this case, I connected it up directly to a Macintosh C22 preamp using the built-in Macintosh Phono preamp, which is a darn good one. I was very interested to see if there'd be major improvements using a much better phono preamp, and I found this to be totally true, as you might expect. I heard more clarity, separation instruments, and deep bass using the phono preamp of the C22. Hearing the difference with Bluetooth turned on and off when using either with the built-in phono preamp or not might have been slightly cleaner, or I could have just been fooling myself as I did really not hear that much change. And speaking of Bluetooth, like most units in this category, when you're connecting it to a pair of speakers or headphones, it's not as simple as connecting your phone to a Bluetooth device. You'll need to turn off any Bluetooth devices in your home that can be paired with, or the Alva TT will likely jump to the wrong device. Once I did this, I was able to pair it up. The outcome of this comparison was also as you might expect. I made this test with a pair of Sony wireless headphones connected hardwired to the headphone connection on the Macintosh C22, then listened to them in Bluetooth mode. The signal was more compressed and a bit edgy sounding compared to without Bluetooth, but this wasn't a surprise either. The Alva MC phono cartridge tracks great, and it gave me a really good sense of inner detail, especially when using the Macintosh phono preamp. The table overall has a decent sense of rhythm and pacing, something Cambridge is well known for in their electronics. Dynamics and drive to my ears could have been better, but again, I was comparing it to a $10,000 turntable cartridge combination. If you're shopping for a good turntable in this price range and could care less about Bluetooth, there are probably better choices out there. Not by a mile, but this price range is very competitive with a lot of great turntables. However, the Alva TT V2 sounds surprisingly good for a Bluetooth turntable, by far the best I've heard. 
I feel for the user who wants something built like a tank that's very simple to set up and easy to use once you get the Bluetooth paired, it is the best in that class. So if you have a great pair of Bluetooth speakers or headphones and just want to add vinyl, it's a pretty cool way to go. Or if you want to roam around your house listening to vinyl using wireless headphones and settle down into your system, you could wire that up hardwired and it can do both and nothing out there can touch that. When you add in the fact that this is a high performance turntable that requires no finicky setup, you have something very appealing for someone who just wants to know it works the way it should. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be sure to not miss any of our content. Also, check out the playlist section of our channel to find any content you might be looking for. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call, chat with us on audioadvice.com, or stop by one of our award-winning showrooms. We'd be happy to help. We'll see you next time.